we're just at the beginning of this. There's, there are many variables, and it's only through the support of multiple clinical trials at multiple centers that collectively we're going to get to a, a rational understanding of how this exactly works and how to optimize it. That there are many molecules now that investigators at different centers are, are comparing, and again, we need to know which ones are really um, better than others. And that will take more studies at more centers, but it's all very feasible. We may want to make cells that persist for weeks. Maybe we want them to persist for months. We don't quite control that fully, but, but we're very close. One issue that I want to raise your attention to, for which we clearly need more research and more really philanthropic support, is the fact that we want to extend this to many other cancers, prostate cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer. We're learning now how to design some of these receptors that will specifically uh, act on these molecules that uh, appear and disappear on the surface of the T cell as the immune response proceeds. And therein for sure lies the key to making more powerful T cells. But we can engineer T cells now that will only act if they see two molecules at the same time. And so if we can intelligently pick those two, even though neither one is unique for tumors, because A, is also found on some normal tissues, and B, which is on this tumor, is also found on some other normal tissues. Well, if we make a smart T cell that only, expresses, that only attacks tissues that express A and B, we may now create cells that will spare the tissues that express B alone or A alone. It's a method to make a T cell in a dish. So we're not ready to do this in clinical trials. There's a lot of science that needs to be worked out. But we're hopeful that we'll, for sure we'll learn a lot of biology, and perhaps we may be able to not just make the cars, but actually, in synthetic fashion, make the whole T cell. Something that's indeed very futuristic is augmenting the potency of these T cells. These T cells survive. They proliferate in the recipient. An army of those can be grown uh, in culture and then persist in the patient's uh, in the patient. We have learned a lot about how to make them overcome uh, some of the barriers in the microenvironment, the environment of the tumor. And I think we're learning now which are the better T cells to reprogram, which means there are fewer to make. If they're better, you don't need to manufacture uh, so many.